In this video, we will be revising the topic of motion in fluids and viscosity. I will quickly run through the important concepts related to these topics. We will begin with the ideal fluid. You know that when we deal with motion in fluids, we are looking at ideal fluids. Ideal fluids are fluids which are incompressible and have no viscosity. That means there is no friction between the layers of liquid. So this is an assumption we are making. The liquids are incompressible and non-viscous. We also deal with streamlined flow. Streamlined flow of, uh, is a flow in which the particles follow a fixed path. So a particle which enters a pipe, say for example, would follow a fixed definite path. So every particle which enters at a particular location in the pipe would follow a fixed path, which are known as streamlines. Secondly, the velocity at a given point is constant. The velocity at different points in the pipe may be different, but at a given point, every particle which comes has a particular leaf as a fixed velocity. And thirdly, mass flow rate at all cross sections, at any cross section is the same. So these are the characteristics of streamlined flow. And based on this third characteristics of streamlined flow, we get principle of continuity which says that at any given cross section, the volume flow rate is the same. So A1, V1 is equal to A2, V2 where A where 1 is uh, one cross section and 2 is another cross section and A1 into V1, A is the cross section area of the pipe and V is the velocity of the liquid flow and A1 into V1 will give you meters per second. For example, A1, V1, A1 is meter square, velocity is meter per second, so I get meter cube per second, which is volume flow rate. So that is principle of continuity. Then we talked about energy of a flowing liquid. It has three energies, pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy. And these energies, pressure, kinetic, and potential per unit volume are Pressure energy per unit volume is equal to the pressure of the liquid Newton per meter square. Kinetic energy <coughs> would be equal to half rho v square and we, and uh, this is potential energy would be given by rho gh. All of them would have the same unit. Uh, for example, the unit would be, uh, in this case, the pressure of the liquid per the unit would be joule because this is energy per unit volume. So this is how we get the energies per unit volume. And According to Bernoulli's theorem, the sum of all these energies is constant at all cross sections. So if I have a pipe in which liquid is flowing, if I take any cross section, the sum of the pressure energy, the kinetic energy and the potential energy would be constant. So basically this is the law of conservation of energy for flowing liquids. And if I divide this by rho g, if all these terms, these three terms are divided by rho g, I would get p by rho g, then I would get v square by 2g plus h. These, these are known as the heads. This is the pressure head, this is the velocity head and this is the gravitational head. So this is the Bernoulli's theorem in, this, in the form of uh, energy heads. Coming to, or once again continuing to look at Bernoulli's theorem, if the pipe is horizontal, that h would be constant at all locations, therefore rho g h term would be out of the equation and therefore we will get p plus half rho v square is equal to constant, that is for a horizontal pipe. Next we discussed liquid flow and how do we measure volume flow rate and one of the devices which is used for measurement of flow rate is venturi meter and this equation gives us the uh, formula for finding out the liquid flow. In a venturi meter you have a pipe which has a, whose diameter decreases. This is 2 and here it is say 0.1 where we want to measure the flow rate. So these are terms associated with location 1 and 2. The 2, this particular point where the diameter decrease is known as venturi and flow rate at location 1 can be obtained by a1 a2 into square root of 2 gh a1 square minus a2 square the areas would be known the cross sectional area over here and the cross sectional area would be known over here and we can find out the pressure difference between these two locations so if i know the pressure difference over here i can find out the flow rate or i can find out the velocity then we talked about velocity of flux and toxilis theorem if you have a container which has an opening at depth h the total the total height of the liquid is capital H and the depth of the liquid or the depth of the opening is a small h. In that case, the velocity with which water comes out over here is given by square root of 2gh. The range, the distance at which this uh, water falls is uh, 2 into small h into h minus h. And this hx will be maximum when the opening it is exactly at the middle of the depth of the liquid, the total height of the liquid. So if an h is equal to h by 2, we will get maximum range. Then we move on to viscosity. Viscosity is basically internal friction between layers of a liquid and the viscous forces are given by 
eta a delta v by delta x eta is coefficient of viscosity a is contact area it, here a is not the cross section area is the surface contact area and delta v by delta x is the velocity gradient so if i have a pipeline and this is let us say this is a pipeline in which water is flowing and if i take two successive layers the change in velocity from v plus delta v so the change in velocity is delta v and this distance is delta x so delta v by delta x is the velocity gradient a is the cross is not the cross section area is the surface area in contact so i can draw the surface or area over here in contact and eta is gives us the coefficient of viscosity so this is how we can find out the viscous forces or this could also be used to find out the uh, coefficient of viscosity for a particular liquid units of coefficient of viscosity kg meters per second kg per meter per second and the another unit is one decapoise which is equal to same one kg meter per second and one poise is one by ten decapoise so you, this may uh, this is also something which maybe you will find useful while you are solving questions on viscosity next is uh, the comparison between streamline flow and turbulent flow so we have something known as critical velocity the critical velocity is the velocity beyond which the flow becomes turbulent from being streamlined so critical velocity is given by Reynolds number into coefficient of viscosity this is density and this is the diameter of the pipe so vc is equal to re eta upon rho d from this we can find out Reynolds number Reynolds number is a number which gives us an idea whether a flow is streamlined or turbulent if the value of re which we find from this equation if it is between 0 and 2000 the flow can be characterized or can be identified as streamlined if it is between 2000 to 3000 it's unstable and greater than 3000 the flow is turbulent Reynolds number is the ratio of inertial and viscous forces if you look at this particular equation if it if we make re the subject of the equation then we will have density going up here in the numerator eta going in the denominator now density is related to mass and mass is related to inertia so it is an indication of inertial forces and eta goes in the denominator and eta represents viscous forces thus Reynolds number is a ratio of inertial and viscous forces then we talked about the Stokes law Stokes law is for objects spherical objects which are falling down with terminal velocity in liquid so let us say we have a container in which we have a liquid and let us say a small spherical object is falling down in this with terminal velocity when terminal velocity is there the upward forces and downward forces are equal so we get w weight of the spherical object is equal to up thrust acting on the object equal to viscous forces acting on the object and weight would be vb rho b jb where vb rho b are the volume and density of the object vi is the immersed volume rho f is the density of the fluid this gives me the up, up thrust and viscous forces are obtained by 6 pi eta r v v this is terminal velocity so this is given to us right this is given we are not looking at the derivation for this so this is the these are the viscous forces for a spherical object and if for volume if i use 4 upon 3 pi r cube then i can get an equation for terminal velocity which will be equal to 2 by 9 r square density of body minus density of fluid into small g upon eta so this is the equation for terminal velocity v this particular v this v can be obtained this can be used to use this formula lastly we look at Poisson's formula which is for flow rate in a pipe so if you have a pipe in which water is flowing we can this is another way which we can find out the pressure uh, the volume flow rate it is given by pi by 8 p is the pressure difference between the two locations in which we are trying to find out the uh, volume flow rate <coughs> r is the radius of the pipe ll is the length through which we are looking at and eta is the coefficient of viscosity now this particular equation volume flow rate volume flow rate is equal to can be written as p by 8 eta l by pi r raised to 4 so <clears throat> everything all terms are brought in the denominator so volume flow rate this is volume flow rate volume flow rate is equal to this is pressure difference upon this term 8 eta l by pi r raised to the power 4 now if you look at this equation and if this equation looks very similar to the equation that we use in electricity current flow current flow rate or electron flow rate is equal to potential difference upon resistance so this is pressure difference which is causing the water to or the liquid to flow this is the volume flow rate which is equivalent to current so this particular term is equivalent to resistance and therefore this 
8 eta l by pi r raised to 4 is known as fluid resistance. So, so these are some of the important concepts that you uh, will find useful in uh, when you're dealing with the flow of uh, liquids and use this or go through this uh, video before you attempt questions for or before you, when you revise the chapter on the topic of fluid flow just before the exam or when you're trying to attempt numericals on this particular topic. Thank you.